What's up, my awesome students? Welcome back to Radical ESL. I'm Chris, and I teach the only online ESL course for politics, history, economics, and related subjects. If you're going into university, maybe to study social sciences or humanities, or anything else in English, or you're interested in the subjects that I talk about, or you just need an English teacher, send me an email at the address in the description below, and we'll decide on a curriculum for you together. Sorry to everyone who was expecting a video last Sunday. I had trouble with my webcam, and now I have a better one. In my last video, we learned about some of the labels people use to describe themselves in politics, and we learned about the words liberal and conservative, for example, which are very common terms here in political discourse. Discourse just means all the conversations that people are having on any given subject. Today we're focusing on a few terms that are a bit less common, um, but still I think are very important for understanding modern political discourse. To make it easier to remember, we're using terms that are considered, or used as at least, opposites. I wanted to find some visuals that would be useful, but most of the things I've seen are, I think, quite inaccurate depictions of, mod of political beliefs and the modern political spectrum. In other words, all the, all the ways, all the different ways people uh, think and the way their beliefs differ. Of course, we shouldn't blindly trust an image or even the idea of a spectrum to explain how people's minds work, especially if the image that you find uh, when you're searching is called the true political spectrum. We're the secret true one that no one will tell you about. <clears throat> but I think some people do blindly trust simple diagrams. I think the main reason most of the charts you find that illustrate people's political beliefs are not accurate is because most people who make these visuals like this, they don't really understand political ideas and vocabulary and just make these charts to discredit the people they think they disagree with. So I'd like to use one of the few that I thought was more or less accurate um, which would at least serve us well for this theoretical discussion. And here it is. <laughs> Let's start uh, by learning the terms left and right wing. Left and right wing have a few different definitions used by different people, so it's not easy to tell you exactly what they mean. That's true for most of today's target language, really. Um, but after a long time studying, I think left wing means thinking people are basically equal and should be treated basically equally, and that right wing means thinking some people are better than others, and the better people should have more. So, for example, if I move a bit left-wing, I might say racism is wrong, because it gives one group more power than, an, than another group for no good reason. And I might denounce all of capitalism for the same reason when I get much more left wing. And I'm quite left wing to begin with, and I do denounce racism and capitalism quite strongly. If you don't know what those things are, don't worry, we'll talk about them in another video. People on the right tend to think inequality is good or else natural and inevitable. They find it easier to make excuses for poverty and racism and capitalism. I used to be there years ago. You might notice that there's no center to this diagram, which I also appreciate. I also think it's accurate, because even though some people call themselves centrists, 
I don't really think you can be in the center. We can argue about that if you like. Either way, you can see liberal and conservative here, liberal slightly to the left of conservative, but neither of these ideas are very far from the mainstream or the normal way people are expected to think. So it's what most people believe, but it's politics that will never make big, meaningful changes, so I'm not really interested. But it is a good time to bring in the word moderate. Moderate means not too different from everyone else, not too different from what people expect of you, not too different from what's considered normal or the center. People who call themselves centrists, liberals, and conservatives are usually moderates. They don't want too much change, possibly because they think the system itself is basically good. They may think that. I don't agree. But let's keep going. If you go further along here, you can see socialism on the left and monarchism on the right. Monarchism means having a monarchy. So a king and queen. That mon, M-O-N, uh, is basically means one. Um, so one ruler, like, say, a king. While socialism means giving all power to the workers and the poor, taking it away from the rich and, while we're at it, from the monarchy. Now, these ideas are moving away from what is moderate. Socialism, in particular, can mean big changes. And socialism has a lot of different methods of practice. It could be pretty radical. <laughs> radical means wanting big changes. But like it says here, radical is a left-wing tendency. I don't think it's accurate to call people who say, who might kill other people for their race or religion or something, I don't think it's fair to call them radicals, even though sometimes you hear that in the news, when there's already a word for those people, and that word is reactionaries. Reactionary means that they want the people in power to stay in power. They want the system to stay the way it is, and they're okay with using violence to keep it that way. Most people in power around the world nowadays are reactionaries, or at least they would be if you challenged their power. So we've looked at most of the words on this list today, except for the word extreme. Extreme is supposed to be the opposite of moderate. In other words, while moderate means you're somewhere in the center without any really controversial views, extreme means you're way off to one side or another. I wanted to look at this word especially because of the way it's used in the media. Usually you hear the word extremist in the news or in the discourse because someone wants to discredit someone else. What? You're an extremist? Oh my god. Not an extremist? If I'm considered extremist in my views or actions, then people think it's okay not to listen to me. I must be wrong. There's this common belief in, well, in all the cultures that I'm familiar with, at least, that if you don't think like everyone else, there must be something wrong with you. But these people are just trying to get you to shut up. To me, words like moderate and extreme are just red herrings, something designed to distract you from the point. The world is not moderate. How could a moderate solution fight against the system that keeps millions of people in poverty? How could a moderate solution stop wars? And how is a world where millions live in poverty and wars can kill millions of people not already extreme? 
I think we need extreme solutions to the extreme problems we face. We can't afford to be as moderate as we have been up till now. So, you know, instead of being turned off when by someone who calls another an extremist or a radical, let's just listen to them. If for no other reason, then we'll learn something from them. So let's review today's vocabulary. We heard the word discourse. A discourse is what people are saying about something, maybe on TV or maybe uh, just among you and your friends. We talked about a spectrum. A spectrum is just a line with any possible points on it, and the political spectrum is what we, what we call all the possible political beliefs a person can have. We looked at left-wing and right-wing. Again, more than one meaning, but maybe left-wing uh, is caring mostly about equality. Right-wing is fine with inequality. To denounce something is to say it's wrong. Anything. Like, like complaining, but maybe more formally, maybe loudly. It depends. Uh, one of the terms we used was moderate, being maybe in the center, not very harmful beliefs, kind of normal or what we call mainstream beliefs. We heard the word monarchy when we saw monarchism. Monarchy means rule by a king or queen. Mono means one. Radical, which means probably uh, way to the left and wanting real change, big changes reactionary, way to the right, wanting to keep things the way they are and using violence to do so. Extreme, ooh, the scary word, so extreme, so different from what's moderate. <laughs> and finally, uh, the term a red herring. A red herring is just something that's put there to distract you from what's real. I hope today's lesson helps you start reading and participating in political discourse in English and that you find it super useful in anything you do in English. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.